Hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us today. We're doing something completely different this week because this week I'm the assistant. Dee Dee is going to take over. She's going to do some Dutch oven cooking here and I'm just going to stand around and taste it, eat it and enjoy it. That's coming up right now on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind and Climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride One true horse A bond that cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance Take a ride on one true horse I'm gonna take a ride on one true horse Today we're going to show you a really simple and easy way to do Dutch oven cooking. Um, we have a stack of different styles and types of pans here. And we're just gonna show you how to do something real simple in your backyard. Ken's gonna help us today. What am I doing? <laughs> and he is gonna start off by opening some cans of apple pie filling. I don't know, I, I suppose I can handle that. It seems fairly difficult. I'm gonna only have you open two cans of apple pie filling. Okay. Now- Third one was here in case I messed up opening the first two? Right. Okay. If we were to, um, you could do this two different ways. You could take stick butter and oil your pan up completely, but I'm gonna show you something a little bit easier that we like to do when we're on top of the mountain. If we're cooking for 23 people, we're gonna use a sheet of tin foil, and this is gonna save on your cleanup work. And Ken does it was not- It strenuous, but I'm done. You do not like dishes. You're gonna take those two cans yep. and just spread them around evenly in your pot. In one pot? In one pot. All right, I can do that. And oh, you boy. can use that you know, spatula. It seems, it seems kind of difficult, but I think I can get her done. Uh, I don't know. Any tricks I should know about this? No tricks, this is pretty okay, simple. Like how do you get that last apple out? <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm joking, I was being serious. Here's your other can. All right. So we have two cans of apple pie filling, and he's just gonna spread them evenly in the pot. We didn't oil the tin foil. We didn't do anything different to it. He's just dumping it in there. Anything keeps me from having to do dishes is good. So I'm now currently a tin foil fan. All right, kind of fairly evenly spread around, except for what I figured to be my piece. It's a little thicker over there. Perfect. All Next right, thing good. that you're gonna add is just a cake mix. Spread evenly on top. You can use any type of cake mix that you like, honey, if you like yellow cake mix, white cake mix. This happens to be a cinnamon swirl cake mix that Kurt and Trent picked out. And you're just gonna sprinkle that on top. Okay, so can I like chuck my extras in the fire or what do you do with that? You shouldn't have any extras. I'm you're going to trash. put it all on top. You guys notice this fire pit that we have going here? It's just a any fire pit that you can pick up and keep in your backyard. Ken started us a fire in there and he used some little wood, some little strips of wood to make nice coals. And we've had them going in there and they are ready to use. One of the things that amazes me, I get her wood most of the time. And Really, the wood doesn't matter. The diameter of the wood, the size of the wood, is way more important than what style. Today it's oak. Lots of times on the mountain it would be pine. But truthfully, the size of the wood matters. You don't want really big wood. You just want like small pieces right. of wood. Yeah, if you have big wood, then it just takes a long time for it to burn down. So you just want something that turns into coals quickly. And then you're gonna cut the stick of butter. It doesn't matter how thick, how thin. Right in there? Yeah, and I guess- Kind of whittle it all over the top? Yeah. I said how thick thin. You do want kind of, yeah, slices that'll spread out. So like three-eighths of an perfect. inch. That's perfect. All right, what do you know about that? I did, 
Perfect, right off the bat. Shoot, here we go, I'm gonna be in the- And you're just gonna spread those around there. And we have down in the bottom of these pans is a silver piece of tin foil pan that you can buy from any department store for a couple of bucks. And we just put that underneath just to kind of catch any coals that might overflow. I'm actually gonna bake this dessert right on top of these Dutch ovens. Um, so it'll, it'll kind of be an interesting display. You could have cooked it right down in the tin foil, but we're just gonna stack bake and you can see how that works. You know, truthfully, it's probably, uh, you probably could have used even tin foil or something down there, couldn't you? You could you, to... yeah, we could have taken a sheet of tin foil and just unrolled a nice big piece of it to catch anything that's overflowing. Oh. What I love about Dutch oven cooking is it is very creative, simple, and easy. You know, I mean, my you favorite part this? of Dutch oven cooking is the rewards. <laughs> so this is going to turn out to be like an apple cobbler. We've got the apple pie filling in the bottom, a cinnamon cake mix on top. Actually, Ken's gonna sprinkle on the cinnamon swirl. And that looks good. And so it'll just kind of be a topping with the butter. That is like cinnamon sugar, that looks really good. And we're gonna bake this just like a cake. You don't stir it, you don't mix it, you just dump and pour it in there. One of the things that, you know, when we're in the back country, uh, you want it simple. You, you do, you want it real simple and easy. And so uh, that's what's nice here is it's just kind of all one deal. You don't need 12 different measuring cups or anything else. Okay, so we're gonna take this lid and you'll see that it has legs on top and you can use the other side of the lid to serve on as a serving platter but the legs on the top of the lid and the legs on the bottom of the lid are great because they um, balance your pans on, either on top or on bottom. Now, when you put your lid on, you put it on and you give it a little push and you kind of seen that just to make sure it fits real snug. You want it to have a snug fit. Each one of these lids and bottoms has a little hole in it and you could put a thermometer in there if you wanted to test and know exactly what the temperature of your pan is cooking at. Okay, Ken, we need some coals. Okay. So because we did not preheat our pan, which I never preheat my pan, that's plenty. We're gonna put okay. those on bottom. All of them? Uh, keep going, keep going. That's perfect right there. We did a few extra coals on bottom, and now he's gonna put a very large scoop of coals on top. Evenly? Evenly. Okay. If you can cover that whole pot, that whole lid with coals, some that would more. be perfect. Okay. You better grab me some more wood here. Okay. okay. I'll let you get the coals out first. Because we did not, there you go. That's actually perfect right there. Preheating your pan will make your food cook a little bit faster. Um, I'm just gonna put these in here too, just in yep. case we need them. Preheating your pan can speed up the process a little bit, but um, so it, without it preheating, we have a little bit of forgiveness there of just letting the pan get warmed up. Now we're gonna let it cook for 20 minutes and then we'll check it and see how, it, see how it's doing. Um, one of the things that Dutch Oven Cook always says is, as soon as you start to smell it, you know that it's done. If you wait a little bit longer, you're overcooking it. So as soon as we start to smell it, it's gonna be ready. What do you think, Ken? I'm looking forward to it. Maybe we should go do chores? I was hoping somebody else was doing those. <laughs> okay, well, we'll be right back and we'll check on this fun dessert. You know, when we're up on the mountain, lots of times we'll, we always have water in five gallon buckets or uh, collapsible buckets or coffee pots around the fire. When you're on your patio in the backyard, make sure you've got a fire extinguisher close by. You know, Dutch oven cooking is and should always be a lot of fun, but it can go bad. It is a fire. And even if you're using charcoal briquettes, it's a fire. That's right. So you want to make darn sure you've got uh, something safe. You know, water's great. Fire extinguisher works really good. Make sure you've got something like that somewhere near the fire.
That's a great plan. And you know what, Ken? Today, you and I just made something pretty easy, a simple dessert. Usually, we would we could do all kinds of creative things in stack cooking. And so you could put your main dish in the bottom. You could do a pot of chicken. You could do a pot of stew. Um, your next dish could be a bread or potatoes or a vegetable of some sort. And your third dish could either be biscuits, again, a bread or your dessert. Quite a variation in what you can do with your pots. A couple other things that I have here are um, Two diff three different styles of lid lifters. And this is so that you can take the lid off without getting burned. Let Ken try one of those out there. Um, Just gonna pick that thing up like that. want to... We're gonna get our coffee pot down in there. Or hot water for hot chocolate or tea. While, while everything else is cooking, get that started, let your water start heating up right there in the fire. You always want to know which direction your wind is blowing so that when you pick up your lid to check what's in your pot, you move your coals in the direction of the wind so that it doesn't blow ashes in your food. But we always love to have a few of those extra minerals in our meal. They're a little, <laughs> a little crunchy to the meal, huh? Um, so this is a short handled lid lifter. This one is a longer lid lifter. And the longer you can have the handles, the farther away you can get from the coals so you don't get so hot. And you know what, Ken, did you show them that your, the long-handled shovel is a lot better than using a short-handled shovel? Right. Because otherwise your arms get burnt and it gets really hot standing next to the fire. So the longer you can go, the better. It's all just creative thinking. A couple other things I have here are uh, these are lid stands, and um, they are great in stack cooking if you purchase a pan that doesn't have legs on them. Um, and you can just put your pan there. You could fill this top with a lot of coals, as many coals as you could fit there. Put your fry pan on top, let your bacon cook in the bottom, and fry a couple eggs in there. So your lid lifters are a lot of fun for a, a variety of ideas. You can use it as a serving platter with your lids also. You can also use it just as a hot pad. Uh, your Dutch oven's hot. You know, if you've got a surface that's burnable, you just set that down on top of that surface. You know, this iron table's not gonna burn, but if you've got a, a surface that's damageable, you put that pan stand down there and you can just set it on there and you're good to go. Yep, and even if you have a pan that has legs on it, this will just add additional legs to your pots and that's, it just adds more stability to your pot. I'm like anxious to check that. We're getting close. We're not quite there yet, darling. Oh, darn. <laughs> All right. Keep waiting. Um, I'm just gonna share a few things about the type of food that we pack in. When we go up on top of the mountain, we feed probably 23 people a week up there. And we take coolers and we pack each day's worth of food in each cooler. And um, that way on Friday's cooler, it doesn't get opened. So you can keep Friday's cooler very, very cold. And it makes it easy for you guys because you only have to let down one cooler a day. Right. And, um, and you can freeze your food ahead of time, pack it into that cooler, and then if you don't open it till Friday, you'll be amazed. You might have to pull things out to thaw out. So that's just a creative packing a cooler use. Um, the next thing that you guys might use is charcoal briquettes versus wood. Um, we're using wood today. You can use either or. I use all types of wood from a light airy cotton wood to a really heavy oak. We're in the east right now, so these guys have a lot of oak to burn, and it burns very hot. You'll want to consider that when you are um, burning your wood. But the basic theory between charcoal and wood is how many briquettes you have on the bottom versus how many you have on top. Now this Dutch oven is your oven. All of your heat stays inside of it and that's why you don't want to take your lid off a lot of times. Because I'm wanting to really bad. <laughs> the more you take your <laughs> lid off, the more you let your heat out. So basically your heat 
is going to take a long time to travel from the top down. It'll move quickly up. So that's why you use less charcoal on the bottom than you do on the top. So if I was using charcoal, I would probably put four briquettes on the bottom and then I probably put seven or eight on top. Now if you want to be very, very specific out there, we have all kinds of um, charts that are made exactly to tell you the size of the diameter of oven that you're using and it will tell you the temperature. If you want this to want run at 350 degrees, it'll say you need five on the bottom and seven on top. So you'll have you can find that online. I find it in all kinds of recipe books. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's just kind of fun. But to be real honest, these are very, very flexible and they're easy and they're fun to use. So, so you I'm, don't have to be so specific. I'm impatient, so can I put more coals on there? You can put more coals on there. I always just test my heat. And um, it's nice and warm, but we, we want it pr plenty hot so for baking. So does it really need more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could put, put another big scoop full. And if I had a big fire pit right now, I would probably fill that shovel load. You want me to get that coffee pot? That I would scoop fun. that shovel full and just fill that lid right with those. When I, once I put the coffee pot in, you know, and I kind of know we're done for the most part with the coals, then I go to bigger wood and uh, get a little more flame and a little more fire going. Uh, so that that coffee pot's getting heated up a lot faster. You can heat that water up pretty darn fast. That's beautiful. Okay, so one of the things that we like to use on the mountain are campfire cooking gloves. And these are, I think, almost fireproof. I don't know if these gloves really are fireproof, but what I like about them is they go all the way up to your elbow so that you don't get burned when you're cooking. They're just a good, solid, insulated leather glove that's not going to let the great. heat come through They're your hands. They're great. So you can get these at any outdoor sports or... Big Bear or favorite store, Ken, Cabela's. <laughs> okay, we're gonna use a lid lifter. And um, quite honestly, in a scenario like this, I can take the lid and just pop it off. And we need a lot Ooh. more heat. Okay, the butter's Ooh, melting thin. Ooh, boy, does that, that smell good. That smells so good. That smells wonderful, but Ken, we need a lot more heat. So do we need it on top or on bottom, or where do we need it? We've got plenty of heat on top, so we're going to add it to the bottom. All right. We need to warm up the bottom. We want to boil bottom. that apple up down there. And get that, ooh, this is boiling. Good. We're going to get that long-handled shovel. Because it does help to keep your arms away from that fire, doesn't it? It does. I mean, it's very comfortable to just reach in there and... Um, Dump it all on there. Pick that up. I, yep. And then, uh, like, you know, I can sit here. I'm gonna have and the you same put, when you're up on top of the mountain let's here. Let's put more on top. Okay. As when you're up on you top can. of the mountain, you know, it's easy. Your fire's bigger, but you can, you can kind of reach in there and you're not, you're not fighting the fire. You're not burning your eyes. You know, because that's a big part of it. It's not just your hands. You've got to get in here, keep your nose and your eyes out of that smoke and do all right more. That looks great. That looks great. Up on the mountain, we have a fire pit that's as the diameter between yeah. Ken and I. It's pretty big. Pretty big fire pit, yeah. And so when you cook your pots next to the fire, you have to be also aware of the heat that's coming off the fire. And it'll heat your pot up on one side more than it will the other side. So every 10 minutes, you'll want to take your pot and turn it. And um, we've, here we've been real careful. We've up. kept the fire to this side and the water pot over there to keep that a little bit insulated. But, you know, one of the things I like about this kind of stuff, it gives you time to do something. And so we're out here on the East Coast and it just gives us a chance to, you know, to see the scenery and check out the views and to be quiet and just relax and, and have some fun. And so, you know, I encourage people all the time to do things like this, just simply to spend the time with your family. You know, one of the things that um, I think is worth mentioning is for a long time, we talked about Dutch oven cooking, but you know, people make it sound confusing sometimes and oh my goodness, it's really difficult and the care of the pan is really important and you know, there's, there's so much sort of hubbub around Dutch oven cooking at times that you sort of get scared of it. Yeah, absolutely. But the truth is, you know, you make this look really easy. Honestly, I'm not even aware of the answer for sure, but how did you learn? 
Well, you told me we were doing a mountain pack trip and I had to figure out how to cook for all those people. <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of jumped in and, and dove into it. So Ken, now all we need to do is just wait. That is the most unenjoyable part. <laughs> Who wants to wait? I want my food now. <laughs> all right, then that is the enjoyable part. You just sit back and admire the views. Okay, Ken, are you ready to give it a little taste test? Well, I don't know about that. The kids might get upset, but I'm ready to look at it. I've been waiting here. Okay, let's take smell the lid it. I'm ready. It smells like kind of like a cinnamon apple crisp. Ooh, <laughs> that is an apple dump cake. That's an apple dump cake. And it's cake. just browned a little bit on top. We didn't, oh. we sprinkled the cinnamon on top, so we didn't stir it in like the cake mix said that you give it a little swirl on the inside of the cake mix, so you could do that. But Ken and I just sprinkled it on top. So it formed kind of a gooey, kind of like a crunchy crust. crust. Yeah, and you can see where the apples just kind of come up through the bottom. Man, that looks good. Now I'm going to show you guys how you take this out of your pot. You can use your lid right here as a plate, and then you just lift this tin foil. And we're going to take it right out here. Just like that. And then you serve it. That's it? That's it, darling. Now how about my pan? Your pan's clean and ready to be used again. You just wipe it out and you're done. Actually, I wouldn't even wipe it out because there's a little bit of liquid in there. I'd set your pan right in here in the heat so that that moisture will dry. Um, a little bit of that liquid will rust your pot. So okay. we'll just let it dry from the heat and then you're done. Well, hon, that looks fantastic. And I know the boys are inside ready to eat dinner so they can have dessert when it's ready to go. Let's go on in there and get that done. Thank you guys for joining us. We love doing this show. We love having you along. And until next week, may God bless the trails you ride and the food you eat. <laughs> for more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, a perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. I'm gonna take a ride on one true